I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Um, so you talk about subsidies for journalism today. Um, people might be saying, wait, what about the separation of press from the state? Won't that compromise it? Well, you know, Bob it's McChesney. really the central issue we all care about. I mean, I think there are two great components of free press in the United States in our tradition. The first great component is the one we all know about. The government shouldn't censor content. It shouldn't regulate journalists. It shouldn't prohibit anyone from entering doing media, like any of us. And we that should never be compromised. But the second great tradition of the American free press tradition is it's the first duty of the state to make sure free press exists. And that part has been lost in the shuffle. One of the striking things we discovered, Amy and Juan, when we did our research is we reread all the First Amendment cases at the U.S. Supreme Court in the last hundred years, all the freedom of the press cases. And what was striking in Hugo Black and Potter Stewart and all the great cases was the assumption that it was the first duty of a democratic government to make sure a credible fourth estate exists. Otherwise, the entire governance of the country will collapse. You cannot have a democracy and self-government and the rule of law. And when I read those words initially in graduate school 30 years ago, I didn't pay any attention because we had a press system. We had, for better or for worse, it existed. It, you know, you might dispute the quality of it, but it certainly existed in sufficient quantity. And uh, now, though, when you read those words, they jump off the page at you, because you were seeing this integration. And it really says that if we understand the First Amendment properly, it's not that it condones our creating new media. It demands it. But in terms of some of the proposals you have in the book, you have one, for instance, about a tax, uh, a federal tax credit to w w would help support media. Could you talk about that, but also in the context of the fact that I wouldn't say now that journalists have a uh, high rating among the American public, yeah. that generally speaking, uh, there is a sense um, in great portions of the American population uh, that the media are part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. admittedly, much of that is directed at the commercial media, but sure. even the fact that the nonprofit media doesn't even register that much in terms of the, the public's well, concern, yeah. uh, the issue then becomes how do you get the public to marshal behind mm -hmm government support of the media when there's such a public discontent with sure. the media? Look, uh, the first thing you say is, we're not here to save the media that gave you George Bush in a stolen election of 2000 or gave you the war in Iraq. I mean, that was a lousy media system, and, and if that system's going down, uh, let's not send the Coast Guard out. But if we're going to send the Coast Guard out to, to save anything, let's save some journalists. Let's save the concept of gathering information and speaking truth to power. And, and this, you know, it, it, you're right, the surveys will show, do you, do you like mainstream media? No, they don't. Uh, but if you ask people, do you want information? And do you want it in an easily accessible way where I can get it when I need it and, and not have to spend six or seven hours trolling the internet trying to find the truth? Yeah, they say yes. You know, we frame our entire dialogue and, and our entire message here, not for, um, you know, the, somebody who's, who's working in journalism, not for somebody who's got an immense amount of time to consume journalism. We say this is not a dialogue about journalism, newspapers, or media. This is a dialogue about democracy. And James Madison, for all of his failings, again, part of this hidden history, James Madison said that a, a supposedly democratic system without freedom of the press and access to the information that it provides is a prologue to a tragedy or a farce or both. What we're suggesting is this old media system, for however we refer to it, uh, produced tragedy and farce, a, a war, a, an unelected president. What we want to talk about now is how we create a new media system that, that works and sustains democracy. And you know what? At every event we've done across the country and in dialogues all over, and I think to, the truth is you two know this. You start talking about it in that way, and you start saying, these are public policy choices that citizens can be involved in. People get very engaged, and they come up with better ideas than Bob and I have written about already. And that's where we want this discourse to go. We don't want to end it. We want to start it. It's going to take a long time. But if we don't have this discourse, I can guarantee you, in the next 10 years, we will move to a state where we will look back longingly to the days of the great media of the late 1990s, early 2000s. That's, that's how dangerous the future looks.